My name is Jose, and I have a big problem. But I don't think it's just me. I think we all have a big problem. And the problem is that it is the 21st century, and we still don't really understand how the brain works. This brain is actually one of the biggest mysteries in the universe. It is responsible for every single thought that is going through your head right now. It is responsible for how you experience the world. And the way I experience my life was with somebody that I really love having a mental disability. And, and there was nothing more heartbreaking than knowing that somebody you love was struggling through this, and there was nobody in the world that could tell you why this was happening or what we could do about it. And I know I'm not alone. I, I know there's people here that also have friends struggling with oppression. I know there's people here that have a parent that struggles with dementia, or maybe a child that has ADD, maybe perhaps a little brother that has autism. We've been battling these for you know, decades. We, we've been really going at it as psychologists, trying to really understand them. But if you take a look at the numbers, we're actually not moving fast enough. We really are not moving fast enough. Let's take a look at autism, for example. One in every 88 kids that are born today will be diagnosed with autism. This is the fastest growing disability in the US, and it's reaching epidemic proportions. It usually costs a family about $60,000 a year to be able to provide the needs of their loved ones. And a lot of them actually live below the poverty line. But you know what the worst kind of poverty is? It's not economic. The worst kind of poverty is loneliness. The majority of children with autism today don't have a single friend. This is absolutely unacceptable. Us as a community, we got to do something about this. We're just not moving fast enough. So today, I'm standing here in front of you to ask for your help. I'm doing an open call to a large community like yourselves and the people watching online to tackle a big challenge. If you take a look at the way psychology is done to the 1800s, and the, and the reason it's so slow, is when a psychology wants to solve a problem, what they have to do is they have to come up with this theory, right? What is the problem? And then they have to test it, right? And they have to go out and recruit people from the community and bring them to the lab one by one to this physical space. So in the 1800s, we had really cool equipment, as you can see. <laughs> uh, if you fast forward to, the, to today, we don't have as cool equipment, but we do have computers, right? But something fundamentally hasn't changed. And the fundamentally hasn't changed. We still are going out and recruiting people and bringing them to the lab one by one. This is the biggest bottleneck we have in research. This is the reason why research is moving so slowly. This is the reason why our parents are still struggling with dementia. Right? So we might as well be in the 1800s if we're not going to change this. So I'm here today to challenge that model and to propose a new model a model that leverages new technologies such as crowdsourcing. So rather than having to recruit people one by one and bring them to the lab, because let's be frank, we are busy people these days, right? We can actually go online, and all I'm asking from you is five minutes. You can make a difference in five minutes. And I know you're asking yourself, well, I'm just this, you know, this one person, Jose. I don't really understand anything about psychology. How is me, five minutes, going to make a difference in the world? And when people ask me that, I tell them a story. I said, look, psychologists are not the only ones struggling with these problems. We have many scientific communities, and one of them is astronomers, right? Astronomers have this massive problem they're trying to solve. They're trying to map the entire universe, right? That's a pretty astronomical problem, right? <laughs> there you got it. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> So they have this, this, this big challenge, and, and they know that there's no way in hell that a group of, of astronomers is going to be able to map the entire universe. One really smart group decided to recruit people uh, in the UK, and what we found is that by recruiting people online, we start sharing more and more knowledge on the, the galaxies, and all of a sudden, something really special happened. One of those people actually found a galaxy. And this is a person just like you and I, this school teacher, right? She dedicated five minutes to classify some galaxies like everybody had done before. 
There was 50 million classifications that happened within a year. 17,000 people responded immediately to this call, and one of them, one of them found a galaxy. If somebody, just like you and I, with five minutes, can discover a galaxy, then really is it that hard to believe that we can map the brain? Right? Well, psychologists, we're starting to realize that it's actually possible. This is, we've been seeing it done before, and what we decided to do as psychologists is like, okay, well, let's leverage the crowd. Let's, let's take experiments that we know, let's take experiments that we conducted for decades, and let's put them online and see if the online community can come up with the same results. And the data doesn't lie. We actually found that the results that we were getting for online were actually not just the same, sometimes they were even better than the ones we were getting in the labs. Participants behave the same way they do in a research laboratory, in a physical research laboratory, as they do online. And the crowdsourcing community and the, and the research community is starting to really realize this. So we were one of those uh, research institutions. We decided, all right, so we have this, this autism research that we've conducted. It took us two years to conduct this research, and it's about how children with autism struggle with facial expressions and being able to communicate with, with their peers. So we took this experiment and we put it online in hopes that we can start collecting data a lot faster. And we woke up to a big surprise. It wasn't just us that started doing this. Harvard University, Stanford, all of them started grabbing the, the, the program that we put online and they started distributing it to their own communities. Then we had moms with children with autism come and try to help their children. And not only that, we actually had children with autism start volunteering online to help their peers. Right? So what do we find? Uh, we have this big data set. At the time, it was actually the biggest data set on this specific problem in autism in the history of humanity, and we did it through crowdsourcing. And what we found is that children with autism, and the reason that they have such a big problem uh, communicating, is that they look at the mouth. They fixate their eyes on the mouth. Well, you know, it's hard to tell what kind of expression the person is doing if you're looking at their mouth. All of us actually look at the eyes. So we get a lot more information on, on the face. So because we were able to do this research so quickly, we started iterating and then created this tool that would allow us to train children with autism to look at the eyes. And all of a sudden, we started getting significant results within three or four months of, of doing this research. And the most beautiful thing is that because this is online, we weren't alone. Now, two weeks ago, a researcher from the United States actually developed with this information a way to diagnose children with autism as soon as two months. Before, it used to be three years before we can diagnose a, ch a child with autism. Now it's two months. Right? And it was, it was people like you that helped this development. So we're now starting with this new technology, we're starting to gain ground on, on, on these big challenges. We're, move, we're starting to move forward. And now you, you and you alone, have the power to discover galaxies. You and you alone, with five minutes, have the power to make a difference in the lives of somebody struggling with autism. You have the power to solve some of the biggest mysteries of the 21st century. Now, what are you going to do about it? Thank you. <laughs>